So with that said, everyone, I want to pass on uh, to our next presenter, a uh, very, very good friend of mine, Jeff Hirsch. We had him here for so many years. I know Jeff for, I don't know, so many years, uh, maybe 10, 15 years probably. And we always uh, meet each other at all these uh, special events that we host and some of the, a lot of these expos. But uh, he's very well known. Uh, if you don't, if you haven't met Jeff or heard about him, or you probably do, because he is the founder and chief editor of the stock, uh, the Stock Traders Almanac, which is a very popular book in today's uh, business, in today's world in trading, uh, and trading. Goes all the way back to to his father who came out with that book, and uh, you know it's it's been a you know, it's been right all, all the time. You see him on CNBC. He's on he's on a lot of the financial stations. And um, you know, like I said, we're just happy to have him. Once again, just remember, guys, great traders never stop learning. So uh, with that said, I'm going to pass it over to him. He's going to talk about why he's the author of why the Dow will hit 38,000. And you could profit from that. Uh, with his little book of his new book that's out. And he's going to tell you a little bit about the market and feel free to answer him and ask any questions. All right. So with that said, uh, Jeff, the stage is all yours. Thanks for coming, Jeff. Check one, two. Is anybody there? We hear you fine. Go ahead, Jeff. Thanks again, Fausto. I had the mic thing off. I think it's been like uh, um, more like 20 years, bud, uh, that we've known each other. Time so flies, I, had, I mean, 20 years. I know. I mean, I had to, it was back in the night in the, um, in a, you know, late 90s, I think. Let me just make sure I can get this technical Which is a good stuff. Going. Everyone has to realize. I mean, to be around that long, I mean, you know what it is? The, more and more people are coming out, you know, offering education. They all think they're analysts, this and that. We all know, just like Melissa just mentioned earlier, sometimes you can't trust everyone's out there. But I think the best thing that everybody could always appreciate when it comes to trading, uh, and Jeff, you could agree to this, is that. Um, it's how long you've been, you know, it's, it's who's endorsing you and how long you've been around. And uh, and that's always key. So we're just glad to have you here again, Jeff. So uh, yeah, go ahead. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you again for having me. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Learning is something we do all the time. Uh, we learn from our, our readers, our subscribers who constantly are asking us questions. So feel free to chime in here. If for some reason I'm missing something that's being asked, just Holler out at me if possible. But uh, now for something completely different. Um, I don't teach trading uh, in these types of classes like Fasto and um, uh, previous uh, speaker does, and a lot of people do. But the things that we put out there um, are for traders, and I think it's a great way for people to turn, you know, all this this profit that you guys make with these you know, day trading strategies into your retirement nest egg by using the long-term strategies that uh, are featured in the Stock Traders Almanac and my newsletter stock at StockTradersAlmanac.com, the Almanac Investor. And, um, you know, just realize that what we're doing here is, is not one of these $6,000 classes. It's it's much uh, much more reasonable, just basic newsletter. Um, get stock picks, ETF trades, tactical uh, market timing, and... Um, specific buy and sell recommendations and uh i don't you don't have to learn how to trade with me you take your trading knowledge and just apply it um some of those profits to this so um just a little word from my lawyers this is for informational purposes only past performance is not a guarantee of future results uh do your own due diligence consult with your advisors and be smart so um Today, I'm just going to give you a little background and history of the Almanac, and I did not found the Stock Traders Almanac. My illustrious father, Yale Hirsch, did. Uh, he founded it in the year of my birth, 1966. The 52nd edition of the Stock Traders Almanac is out uh, wherever books are sold. I have them here, and a free copy comes with a subscription to my newsletter. So I'll give you a little more uh, trip down memory lane. We'll look at my philosophy and the process. We'll talk about the sweet spot of the four-year cycle, which is a little bit sour right now, uh, though there is still more of it left. Um, we'll look at my forecast, uh, outlook update, some current analysis, and, of course, the best six-month switching strategy, not just sell in May. you got to buy in October and get yourself sober if you're going to sell in May and go away. And a tactical seasonal rotation strategy that we use, a lot of different uh, sectors, um, commodities also, but uh, mostly stock sectors, um, and our stock selection process, which uh, continues to outperform the market, um, even though we've had uh, quite a, a volatile period right here. 
So 52 years in the street, there's the first copy of the Stocks Credit Almanac back in 1968. Um, when the, uh, the first edition came out, the fall of 67, some inscription on there from my folks to uh, whoever returned that to me, friends of theirs. Uh, and for what it's worth, uh, the big guy, Yale, is still kicking at 95. He's living with mom in a home. Uh, not quite the, the brain that he used to have, but he's still he's still there and, and has uh, some, some glimmers there, but we get to see him, so that's good. The current 2019 Almanac, some of the books we put out there, I think Yale's you know, known for his coining phrases and don't sell stocks on Monday. I think it was a great uh, title. Uh, that seasonality has changed a little bit, but there's his book from the um, late 80s. The super boom that Fasto mentioned, I am not going to get heavily into that today. I have some more tactical stuff for you, but that's based upon uh, a long-term pattern that uh, Yale uh, discovered back in 1976 for 500% moves in the stock market after war inflation, which came true after Vietnam. And when I put that forecast out in May 2010 at the Dow at about 12, excuse me, 10,000, uh, folks thought I was a little bit nuts, but here we are uh, pushing quite close to that. And then my little book of stock market cycles, um, which continues to find some, um, you know, support from people, uh, even though it's been out for a uh, better part of 10 years, uh, about eight years and uh, all the places we get to appear or have our stuff picked up. So um, the sound died. Is that still working? I'm just looking back at some of the quotes over here. It's not working, huh? Any sound now? Okay, technical difficulties. Um, sorry about that. So our philosophy is that sort of a take on the uh, George Santana quote that those who fail to remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And we feel that those who study market history are bound to profit from it. Um, uh, but, you know, as my friend Sam Stovall likes to say, we've got to use history as a guide, not as gospel. Or as Twain said, history rhymes. It doesn't repeat exactly. So the offer that I have for you today is the um, Stock Traders Almanac uh, comes for free with our uh, subscription to the newsletter. Again, a much more reasonable rate than a lot of the things that you get offered on here. Uh, our, one of our best deals here is $250 for two years. You get a free Almanac each year. Your code is CTU two year. If you just want to do the one year with us, it's 150. It also comes with a free Stock Traders Almanac and we'll ship that right out to you. Um, and the newsletter follows along with the book throughout the year, um, as well as making um, all sorts of uh, stock and ETF uh, recommendations and you know, investment, investing and trading ideas. So 50 years of analyzing, researching and testing practically every market trend available. We publish those findings annually for 52 years in the Stock Traders Almanac, updated weekly and monthly in our newsletter. And we use this knowledge to construct portfolios. Uh, we do have a, a good base in fundamentals and technical analysis. One of the first things that Yale taught me was price to sales ratio. I know you guys are day traders, but if you want to convert some of that into some more solid stocks, you might want to look for some things with uh, good valuations that are uh, uh, accelerating in revenue and earnings growth. And we'll get into that in a bit. We look at market internals and sentiment, you know, advanced declines, new highs, new lows, put call ratios, investors' intelligence, bullish and bearish advisors, uh, monetary government policy. We've been contending for months that the Fed is the biggest risk to the market and the economy, plus other current trends in the economy. And of course, our you know, foundation, our um, forte is cycle, seasonality, and recurring patterns. Um, one of the things that is happening right now in the four-year cycle is this sweet spot. Uh, you can see here in the um, – so wait a second. Am I having a problem here with this connection? Hillary? see Ted telling me that reconnect didn't work.
Thank you, Ted. Getting worried. <laughs> Excuse me. So, all right. Um, you can see highlighted in the orange the two um, – quarters that are supposed to be the worst part of the four-year cycle q2 and q3 didn't quite get that this year looks like that's uh taken back uh a little bit from q4 but the three-quarter span from q4 of the midterm year which we are right now through q2 of the pre-election year which would be june of 2019 is um the strongest uh spot of the the sweet spot of the four-year so you can see the dow average is about 20 percent s p 21 and uh, NASDAQ, 32%. So if we can get through some of these tariff fears and the Fed can come to its senses and take a pause, uh, we could probably rally into into year end and, um, you know, that'll be the Santa Claus rally, which I'll explain to you shortly. And that would be a good sign. And then have uh, a positive first two quarters. Um, and then I think things become a little bit more difficult with the comparisons, corporate comparisons quarter over quarter. That's a whole long story. Here's our, um, you know, uh, midterm year, uh, one-year pattern. We've got a few things here. You know, the January barometer is one of the things Yale created. And then we have the Santa Claus rally, which is the last five days of the year, the first two of the new year. It's an indicator. And the first five days of the year. These three early in year indicators, January indicators, are what we call the January trifecta. In a midterm year, when all three are positive, like they were in 18, the history is pretty pretty bullish. You can see the red line is all years that had a positive January trifecta and the midterm year. This, um, you know, ha had our bias a, a bit bullish, more bullish this year. You can see all years in the black line, um, kind of modest. And then midterm years, all midterm years in the blue line, usually uh, a more pronounced worst six months. Didn't get that this year, but everyone forgot when they were declaring Salome is dead that the uh, last part of the worst six months is October. And we've got October phobia, and we had that, and it's lingering right here. You can see in the purple line, the current year up through the end of November, you know we're down right around here. And I think that one of the important things for me technically is none of the indices uh, breached, or all three of them didn't breach the uh, early year lows. Looked like the S&P intraday touched it yesterday. Um, but, you know, it's a triple bottom potentially. Uh, we're going to have to clear these November highs before we can get – um, you know, more supportive and more constructive here. But uh, if if we can't get through that, we get some help from the Fed uh, back it off. I think we can finish the year a little bit stronger. But it, it will be important if we do or don't, and that's one of the indicators that we track. So one of the other midterm year patterns, just to to dally into the four year cycle here, is a uh, about a fifty percent gain off the midterm low, forty seven point four percent for the Dow. Nasdaq has an average seventy percent gain from the midterm low to the pre election year high. You can see I've highlighted the clusters of October lows. You can see October midterm years does have a tendency to uh, um, exhibit volatility and, and weakness and low point. Uh, some famous lows in there, 74, 90, 98, and, and 02. Uh, and you can see in the Dow, there's also some, some uh, early year lows, kind of like we had this year, a lot of them in January. But the uh, significance to me here is the uh, a cluster of highs at in December and on the last trading day of the year in the next year in the pre-election year. So a positive look at the four-year cycle. Uh, we may have, be getting this midterm weakness a little bit later than than normal, but uh, midterm years are, are definitely are usually a volatile year, and we're seeing some of that happen there where presidents try to push through their more their most unsavory and more difficult policies. We're seeing that with the tariffs and some other things right here. Uh, not to mention some of the um, you know, uh, investigation stuff going on. But if we can get through this, it might be a very uh, typical midterm bottom, perhaps a little bit later in the year. You can see the Dow bottomed in uh, December of 74. It was a generational low. Uh, so we could get something a little bit um, like a midterm bottom here if we haven't seen that already. So moving along, uh, our forecast for 2018 was put out in December of 17. Next Thursday, uh, before Christmas, the 20th, I believe it is, will be the day that we put out our 2019 forecast. Um, the tea leaves were telling us a uh, 5% chance last December of a full-blown midterm bear market uh, caused by something, um, you know, doomsday-ish or no impact from tax reform. I don't think we're getting that right here. Some people are declaring we're in a bear market. I don't see that just yet. Uh, we'll need a little bit, a little bit more on the downside. 
um, to confirm that. Our base case uh, still on track. Uh, it will take a bit to get to an 8% gain for the, for, the, for the year, though it's not inconceivable. And um, uh, best case scenario, clearly uh, not happening. We thought there was a better chance uh, at the end of December with everything looking uh, quite positive where um, we would get a, a big boost and hit a, a you know big a bigger number on the Dow and, and, the, and the rest of the market. But um, that's where we're at right now. Currently, our market at a glance, and this is one of the features of uh, the um, stock traders almanac.com and almanac investor newsletter. Uh, we put this out every month. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of it, but, but you can see the five disciplines that we look at seasonal, psychological, fundamental, technical, monetary policy. Um, seasonally, very bullish time period. We've got a full docket in December with the January effects. Small caps really start to outperform uh, in, in mid December. It's no longer the January effect, it's the sort of the mid December effect. Uh, we put out our um, only free lunch on Wall Street. It's a basket of distress, small microcap stocks making new 52-week lows on the triple witching Friday. It's a great trading time. You can option those if, if that's something you trade. There's a lot of them that are that are you know usually uh, optionable. And uh, we send it out to subscribers. It's a great little short-term trading strategy we put out there. It's for nimble traders like yourselves. Um, and then, of course, the Santa Claus Rally, um, not a trade that starts in, Thanksgiving, in in Halloween or Thanksgiving or whatever. It's the something that Yale discovered, invented in 1972. It's the last five trading days of the year, the first two of the new year. Uh, and when, when Santa fails to call, bears may come to Broadwall. So we'll be watching that um, that week, uh, uh, you know, the last part of the year, the first couple of days of the new year, very carefully. So ecologically, uh, bullish, you know, uh, sentiment has come off a bit. Uh, fundamental things are still quite firm. Um, you know, the economy uh, is still is still chugging along quite nicely. Uh, some of the um, corporate stuff has been, you know, they've lowered some expectations, but uh, for the most part, we still have low unemployment and decent economic growth. Uh, technically, you all know that we're we're quite challenged, um, trying to reclaim uh, some of the moving averages, trying to find support here. Uh, Thankfully and um, constructively, we have not breached those early year lows. Monetary policy, as I said, Fed biggest risk. Uh, it's not really inconceivable for them to pause and evaluate things, but we shall see. We'll find out next week. Our December strategy calendar. Uh, some things for traders on here. Um, the bulls, the happy bulls are uh, historically uh, positive trading days for the S&P 500, days where the S&P has been up more than 60% of the time in um, the last 21 years. Bearish is the reverse of that. And you can see there's other trading highlights around triple witching, which is very strong in uh, December versus other, um, you know, triple witching. That's the third Friday of uh, March, June, September, and December where, uh, you know, index futures and options all expire on that same day. Um, trading around Christmas is bullish. So there's a couple ideas there. And then all of the um, different economic releases for you to keep your eye out. And plus up top, uh, our sector seasonalities that are in play. We've got a nice trade uh, that we just put out in oil uh, in the newsletter on the XLE, the oil stocks, not the um, uh, uh, commodity. And there's a few other ones that are in play here, quite a few, and then some others that are winding up. But uh, oil and also copper comes into play right here. And that's something we'll be looking at considering both of those have come down quite a bit. There's a couple of stocks that we trade in copper, and you probably, you'll probably see one of those on my list when I get to it in a few. So the Santa Claus rally, not what everyone says it is. It is the last five trading days of the year and the first two of the new year. It is not a trading strategy. It is an indicator. Um, normally at this time of year, there's an average 1.3% gain in the S&P 500 as most um, regular you know, retail investors and a lot of people uh, take a break, uh, get with family and do other things over the holidays, the week between Christmas and New Year's. I myself will be visiting family, uh, which is often what I do do at that point. But this leaves the pros, uh, traders and such there to gobble up any um, you know, bargain stocks that have been hit with tax loss selling and generally a bullish bias here. In years when we haven't had a Santa Claus rally have either uh, you know been flat or down, but usually there's a time later in the year where you can buy stocks at a better price. You can see here since 1994, we've had a negative uh, Santa Claus rally is flat. 2000, we had the bear, 05 was flat. 2008, we had a bear. 
2015 was flat, and we had a mini bear in 2016 uh, that bottomed on February 11th. So that's the little crash course in the Santa Claus Rally. And here's the only free lunch on Wall Street. This is the history going back to 74. Uh, back in the old, day, the old days, there was a saying that, um, you know, stocks making new 52-week lows on December 15th on the New York Stock Exchange outperformed the composite index itself by, by February 15th, you know, two-month trade. We found, <clears throat> running this over the years, that it was better to wait uh, for the tax loss selling to abate. And we tried different times, and we found the best time to do it is pick stocks from the list on Triple Witching Friday, December. You got a lot of volume, a lot of action, and um, it also gives us the weekend to glean through the list and knock out any uh, you know glaring oddities, things that are very thinly traded. And we try to get a list together that's that, that's tradable. And we put those stocks out over the weekend to our subscribers um, so they can get into them before the open on Monday. You can see historically uh, the our picks have beaten the, the you know, composite by about 9% uh, versus, um, you know, gain of 11.9% versus 3%. Let me just check back over here, make sure everything's good. Okay. Sorry, I'm just toggling back between my screens to the um, see if there's anything in the chat over there. So, sell in May, go away. The best six months switching strategy, best and worst six months that Yale created, devised in 1986. Um, the only um, you know strategy black box system that's been proven. Uh, this gentleman named um, David Aronson, who put out a book in 08, was our best investment book of the year in the Almanac, called Evidence-Based Technical Analysis. And he and his colleague, Timothy Masters at Baruch College, did a uh, test, put 6,000-plus black box algo trading systems through the um, – uh, scientific method disproving the null hypothesis to see whether they the results were uh, 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 you know the result the returns were the result of chance or if there was any predictive power they all failed when they took the best six months uh, buying October 31st selling April 30th versus buying April 30th and selling October 31st at the close of course um, since we put it out in 86 so from 87 forward they found that unlike the other 6,000 the best six month switching strategy had predictive power and was not the result of chance. So we like to look um, at different time frames to to confirm that different patterns and and um, cycles are, are relevant or or you know uh, sound. So here we have a picture of the Dow Jones Industrial one year seasonal pattern. The red line is 1901 to 1949. The green line is 1988 to. Uh, 19 to 2017 after 87 crash a systemic change to the market and then um 1950 to 2017 so you can see back in uh the old days uh when this was a farming society um when the you know the the planting season begins you see the market take off uh from may through september to getting into harvest time where all the cash flows come into the economy. And since the military industrial complex, the service economy kicked in, we have this pattern where the stocks go relatively nowhere from May through October with increased volatility, just like we had this year in October. We've got a little bit more right here in, no in November or December too. But um, so that's just a confirm of the best six months pattern visually. And let's look at some of the numbers here. So, um, the only, uh, going back to 1950, the average gain of the Dow in the best months, November to April, is 7.5%. In the worst months, it's 0.6% May through October. And taking a one-time $10,000 investment, and this is where you can put some of your trading profits to work uh, over the long haul and do this for, for many years and build yourself a little bit of a nest egg um, while you take some of those profits off the table and put them to work. So investing in $10,000 at one time back in 1950 in the best months gives you a gain of over a million dollars and the worst months a gain of only a thousand dollars. Now, Add in our technical timing trigger, MACD, something that Cy Harding did a bunch of research on um, using Jerry Appel's MACD, and I use the 8.17.9 for the buy and the 12.26.9 for the sell, the faster, shorter one for the buy because bottoms tend to be more of an event, whereas tops are a process, take a little bit longer. We use the slower 
um, longer MACD for the top, and we start looking for our buy signal in um, uh, uh, after October 1st and our sell signal after April 1. So adding in just that simple timing indicator increases the average gain to 9.1% for the best six months, minus 08 for the worst months, and it almost triples the results uh, of that hypothetical 10 grand at one time in 1950 to nearly 3 million and the and turns the slight gain in the worst months to a loss of over $6,000. We just had our buy signal on October 31st and um, we're uh, a little bit of a drawdown right here, but I think it was a good buy point and it was a, a, um, a healthy signal where we came below the zero line for the, those of you that know your MACD. Um, <clears throat> Oh, Richard lost about a half the talk. Well, I hope they're recording this. Um, great. Thanks, Eric. And Richard, I apologize, but you're welcome to call me. And again, if anybody wants my slides, you can email me at jeff.hirsch at hirschorg.com. Let me ask you, I'll even type that in for you. Jeff.hirsch at... Did I get that right? There you go. Um, the MACD numbers, Linda, uh, are eight seventeen nine for the buy, and twelve twenty six nine for the sell. And you can see some images of this stuff on my website if you go through. There's also a free trial if um you guys want to uh um you know kick the tires a little bit. Free seven day trial if you go to try to read one of the articles. But looking here at the um, record of the best and worst six months, sell in May since 09. I mean, we had uh, that generational low in 09, and then we had a pretty strong worst six months. So I like to keep a record of <clears throat> if things are still working. So granted, we've had a few um, decent worst six months over the past, uh, what, 10 years or so. Um, <clears throat> And uh, some mediocre, if not kind of lame, uh, best six months, namely uh, 2017. Um, but since October 09, the best months are still outperforming uh, the worst months by several fold, nine, about 9% nine to, you know, 2.3 or 8.2.3, 8.7 to 2.4. And uh, NASDAQ 10.4 to 4.3 last year. Uh, NASDAQ uh, was down um, in the worst months, and um, we're still waiting for it to be up uh, this year. So, so our strategy, one of the keys, one of the one thing, of, when anyone asks me, what's the one thing you teach people uh, about trading? It's sell your losers quickly and short sell them you know those gain those losses cut them short and let your winners ride um you can you can uh, monitor those wins and we like to with the smaller stocks that we pick or any of the stocks we pick we'll sell half on a double and take our um you know initial investment off the table or you can sort of take a little bit off as you're going up maybe up 40 percent sell 20 up another 40 sell another 20 percent for the kind of stocks that we pick. So we do sell some things in May, but we don't go away. We get rid of losers, underperformers, and we look to go short some stocks or long some industries that do well in the worst months, like utilities and defensive positions. You'll see some of that um, once I move forward here. Uh, as I said, we use MACD and other technical tools. Um, it's kind of a risk on, risk off thing. We get more aggressive in the best months and uh, more conservative in the um, worst months. Uh, you can use options, as I've mentioned, and leverage. Um, you know, one of the examples um, from a good friend of mine, John Person, who I used to do the commodity almanac with, uh, just a good worst six months sell trade. We, I was down with him uh, working on the um, commodity almanac, and he was uh, looking at the Russell 2000 going up and the um, <clears throat> advanced decline line going down. So we put on a vertical bull call spread for the uh, – uh, TZX, if memory serves, the the, the triple triple short um, uh, small cap index, and uh, um, I think it was he, he was trading about fourteen or fifteen. He bought a sixteen, sold an eighteen for the. This was in April for the May expiration. Of course, a, a Russell cracked, came down. He covered that. I think it was like a seventy eighty percent gain on a little trade like that. So that's one of the ways to 
take your trading strategies and your uh, you know options trades if you use that um, to capitalize on the the underlying teams we put out there and some of the stocks we recommend. Here's our tactical uh, switching strategy. We have um, when we put it out there the after the close on the 31st, we said we'd be taking uh, either the average closing price uh, of the next trading day, November 1st, or uh, the buy limit, which was whichever was better. So we ended up doing a little bit better than the um, uh, the price. Uh, I think it was the buy. We got them all there with the buy limit. And um, yeah, we're off a little bit. This was updated a few days ago, but uh, we, we hold this without a stop because it's our seasonal trade and we don't want to get whipsawed out in any of this kind of volatility right here around this time of year. So uh, we're comfortable with where we are, and I think the market's trying to find some support. So we'll be sticking with that. Now, it, it really works. You can ask our subscribers. One of our uh, loyal subscribers, Richard Canfield, um, who continues to renew, uh, has been trading the uh, best eight months switching strategy for NASDAQ. NASDAQ has the best eight months. Um, goes from <clears throat> October, excuse me, November to June. And you can see uh, he t initially took about, uh, I guess, a million and a half dollars out of his IRA and has been trading the QQQs using our signals. Um, when people were complaining about uh, um, there being no action, uh, he's there pulling in a 17% return um, using our October buy signal or June sell signal. Uh, and then back in 2015, um, he was pretty... Uh, pretty patient and was able to, you know, lock in an 11% return um, on just uh, one simple trade using our uh, October buy and our, our June sell. So um, that's how it's done. And that's why we're, we're talking about taking your trading profits and turning them into um, a retirement nest egg by patiently sticking to some of these systems. Our tactical seasonal uh, sector rotation calendar based upon the um, seasonal patterns of the different stock sectors. We also uh, um, layer in some of the, the, you know, more defined and more reliable um, commodity seasonality. As I mentioned copper before, uh, and you'll see some of the stocks that we'll trade there. The, the copper ETF is, um, you know, the one that trades the commodities, not really, it's pretty thin. The other one, the COPX, that's the stocks isn't bad, but we like Southern Copper and also Global Brass and Copper Holdings, and um, you'll end up seeing those in the newsletter. One of them is still on the list. So you can see there's a cluster of uh, bullish sectors in um, October. You see oil, as I mentioned, the XOI, that's the oil stock index, which is the XLE ETF, um, gets going here in mid-December. There's a few shorts on the list uh, that you know are most consistent. And one of the one of the, the more pronounced long and shorts is uh, the material sector. Whoops, hold on a second. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. But this that 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 list is from page 92 of the Stock Traders Almanac. Uh, we've also got a couple of charts on 94 and 90, 96 to show you that, our, our sector uh, seasonality calendar. We look at highly correlated ETFs and stocks, um, current market conditions. We look for trade setups. And as I said, the material sector is a perfect example. Here is the uh, pattern since 1990 going through year end 2017 of the material sector. Um, that's as far back as the data is goes these days. So you can see from May through October, very pronounced uh, worst month bearish period. And then from October through um, you know mid-May, you have this bullish period. Um, pretty clear on this chart, uh, one of the more pronounced ones. And just using a similar comparison, the um, performance in this, of sector rotation, meaning going long the best and short the worst, or long the bullish months and short the bearish months, gives you a 14% return since 1990 versus 5.8 of buy and hold. That means just owning the sector all the way through. In that same 10,000 um, you know, hypothetical investment uh, example, uh, starting in 1990 turns into um, gains of almost 400 grand versus just under 50 grand for buy and hold. So just an idea of how uh, sector rotation can be uh, improved returns. Here's a look at the materials chart, um, just updated so you can see that kind of went sideways for a while, but man, it got slammed in the October carnage. And um, I think we got out about early mid-October. I think we locked about four or 5% on this, but 
there was a lot to be had here on the downside. Even right out of the block, said you traded that, you probably could have shorted this a, a couple of times if you were, you know, knowing that the seasonality existed and um, we're tracking it and looking for some of the technical weakness, like breaking through this doji right here. I'm not exactly sure what your styles are, but um, I think you could probably imp implement them there. Here's a look at the, uh, you know, the sectors that we have with the buying spree. Yes, we got banged up on a couple things here. Got stopped out of um, our uh, technology trade, but we're getting back into it. Um, you know, these things do happen. That's why we put stops on some of these. Our auto sell is about 10% above the average uh, return, historical return you saw on that other chart. You can see we've been holding on to healthcare and uh, biotech for a bit because, um, you know, we think that's a, a, a good future there. Um, especially healthcare has been a great winner. Biotech's a little bit sketchy right now, but I think that can come around. <clears throat> and you can see some of the um, uh, defensive plays here, the staples we still hung on to, nice gain there, 11%. So our contention is that studying market history can produce gains like some of the ones here. There's one of the copper trades there, Global Brass and Copper Holdings. Um, Southern Copper, which we've traded, Arison Networks was one that came through our stock screens, as well as United Health way back, and we're still uh, hanging on to United Health. Uh, from the sector rotation, you can see some some pretty good trades in the materials sector and the financials and the tech stocks, as well as the Russell 2000. So these are the kinds of things that we're putting uh, together with seasonality and trade setups and some technical and fundamental analysis. Our stock portfolio. These are the stocks that we've been picking using our, our, our technique that I'll tell you about in a, in a couple of minutes or in just a moment. Um, starting in, in 19, uh, excuse me, 2001, the, um, uh, I'm just looking to see if you guys got any comments there. Uh, our stock picks with a little bit of, you know, up and down, but again, way above the market up 461% versus 122 for the S&P and 220.5 for the Russell. A lot of our stocks tend up being more Russell 2000 type stocks, a couple of large caps, so we throw that in there for comparison. So let's see, Richard template, let's see. Thanks, Richard. What about drawdown on seasonal compared to buy and hold? Um, I think you can see the drawdown is is usually, um, I mean, this year's, you know, the drawdown's negligible. Uh, so far, it's a couple of percent, but uh, I haven't seen any major drawdown on buy and hold. I, I mean, on, on seasonal versus buy and hold. More more drawdown on buy and hold, like 08, for example, in 2000, when a lot of the, the carnage happened in the worst months. <clears throat> but that's a good question. So um, our tactical switching strategy buy signal, which we just got on October 31st, we put out a new um, basket of, uh, you know, top-ranked hand screen stocks, undervalued, under Wall Street's radar, accelerating growth, technically sound, relative strength, but not off the charts. You've seen some of the fresh allocations to our major averages, um, you know, the, the Diamond, Spiders, Cubes, and Russells, the IWM, the QQQ, the SPY, and the DIA, and then um, the allocations into the uh, seasonal sector, uh, the sector ETFs for the seasonal trades. Now, the stock selection process. We use uh, the Zach's Research Wizard to screen for um, fundamental criteria. Uh, we have a pretty robust, excuse me, robust, um, you know, about two dozen or so uh, criteria that we screen for. We're looking for revenue growth and acceleration, earnings growth and acceleration, uh, good margins, good valuations with, you know, PEs uh, that are, you know, comparatively reasonable price to sales ratios, like I mentioned earlier, good cash flow, debt. And then ratings is something that we're looking, we're not looking for what the ratings are from the different broker terms or wirehouses, but how many of them are. So if we have two stocks, all things being equal, and one of them has 20 analysts following it, and one of them has three or four or five uh, uh, analysts following it. We're going to go over the one that's got three or four or five because that's going to be something that's off Wall Street's radar. Not a lot of people are following it and have picked up on the story. And our screen showing us that the stock's growing. It's got good valuations. We're looking at the charts, making sure there's relative strength, but it's not, you know, running away from us. And then um, you were going to look for, you know, points to, to get into it on the charts with support and resistance, candlesticks, moving averages, 
as well as um, you know gaps and and uh, uh, consolidations and, and different and pivot points and that sort of thing. <clears throat> we break it down into different market caps. Under a billion is small cap for us. One billion to five billion is mid cap, and over five is large cap. And of course, on the short side, we invert that and look for stocks that are losing money or the revenues, you know, uh, uh, this decelerating or, or decreasing, and earnings are going down, and they're overvalued and in a you know negative chart pattern, maybe failing at support or failing at resistance or something like that, or breaking through support. <clears throat> and of course, our seasonal overlay. We'll look at some sector seasonality and strength as well. Um, like for defensive basket we put out earlier this year, that's, that did quite well and still doing well. October or even, you know, August, September, October, we're looking for uh, stocks to go long. Um, once we get through the best eight months in June, we'll start to look for some stocks to short. Uh, and there are some other ideas that come up throughout the year. So um, here's a look at the defensive basket we put out back in June, where it was um, just in uh, September, or even at that point before the market cracked, we were still, uh, you know, beating the S&P. There was a lot of dividends that came through there, just about the, um, the a, a better yield, but and about the same amount of return. Uh, some of these are still on a list. I'll show you the current portfolio in just a minute. Then in November, we put out this um, new long stock basket with a little. Uh, description of what they do. You can see the small caps. We've got a few of them there. A uh, good chunk of mid caps. We've got sales growth, PEs, price to sales ratio, market value. There's a yield and then a buy limit and a stop loss. And here's where we are as of uh, about a month ago, uh, pretty much around the same. We did get stopped out of a few things. This uh, Lumentum stock, uh, they lost a, cl a big client. So that one we got, got pinged on. We got rid of that. But um, a lot of the other ones are doing well. And you can look at some of the, uh, um, what do you call the, um, the, the defensive ones to pick McCormick back in June, up 39%, uh, Church and Dwight up 30%. So the, some of these uh, nice stocks that we picked, even back in you know November when things were still down, got some nice numbers here. The recent basket, whoops, the recent basket we, we picked, uh, some of them are, are a little bit of a drawdown right here, but um, I think we'll be doing pretty well with these uh, in another month or so. So there's some opportunities for people to get into stocks uh, at this juncture right here. Just seeing where we're at. So um, again, I think uh, I just want to, you know, sort of wrap it up a little bit and open the floor to questions. But I want to remind you guys that, you know, the 2019 Stock Critters Almanac is here. If you want to get a free copy of that with your subscription, you can go to the website at stocktradersalmanac.com and punch in that code there, CTU one year, CTU two years. We'll send you the almanac, and you'll be in for the only free lunch on Wall Street picks, our Santa Claus rally and January barometer indicators, as well as um, a host of different uh, seasonal uh, sector and commodity trades. We'll be looking at copper coming in there. Natural gas comes around in December, uh, excuse me, in February. Um, and there'll be, uh, you know, uh, several other um, stock and ETF, uh, you know, trades and trading ideas throughout the year, as well as some shorts in the summer and some defensive positions in the in the later in the spring, and um, our current and ongoing advice on, you know, what we think about these individual stocks and trades and where our stops are and when to get in and out. So actionable trading advice and comparatively speaking. It's quite a deal for um, the kind of prices that I'm seeing out there. You kind of get a class every week, every month in what we're looking at. Uh, and we're always here if you want to give us a call and have questions about things. So um, give us a shot. And some of the benefits, you know, we have uh, these expanded model stock portfolios, targeted strategies for growth and income. You see some of that in the defensive uh, basket. Frequent updates and analysis on all of our trading and investing ideas. You get the tactical switching strategy sector rotation and ETF portfolios, the market at a glance that I showed you, the monthly outlook and the almanac. I got into it a little bit. Our strategy calendar you saw, the best six months buy and sell signals and all our portfolio updates. The stocks that have been uh, beating the S&P 461 to 122%. And of course, the free almanac. So um, with that, I'm going to see if anybody has any uh, questions over here. So let's see. 
Um, thanks, Hillary. Uh, you're in, Linda. All right, well, send us a note, jeff.hershore.com, uh, or, or go sign up at the website. Give us a call either way. Um, I guess the phone number I could give you is 845-875-5000. Is that right? If so, it's also on the website. It's drizomnac.com. Um, so, Robert, what initial investment is recommended for beginners? Fasto, Fasto uh, mentioned that we can get a feed of level three data for fifteen dollars. Can someone talk about that? I don't know about that. <clears throat> you can get my newsletter for nineteen ninety five a month, though. So, um. Hopefully, uh, we can help you guys, um, you know, take some of these trading profits and uh, put them into a retirement nest egg. So I can just go back through here. If you want to see what the deal is, some of the stocks, is that what people want to look at? Well, I will see if anyone's got a question. If not, you know. It's okay. We can wrap up a little bit early. I'll give it a few minutes. I'm sure everyone's got lots more to do. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Maybe I spoke too fast. Uh, try to, you know, get him in early. <laughs> uh, get him out early, you know. All right. Well, you guys know where to reach me. StockTradersOmanac.com. You got our number. You can email me. I'll send you the slides. You can call me and we can talk about, you know, other things uh, if you want, you know, more detailed explanations on things. Uh, how do I send the PowerPoint to this gentleman? Can you email me or can you send me your email address? Um, you can do the subscription monthly. It's nineteen ninety five a month, but the year subscription is um a better deal for you it's uh 150 dollars and you get the stock traders almanac which is 50 dollars retail you can probably buy it for i don't know 25 or 30 bucks on amazon but um two years 250 buck and a quarter a year you get a free almanac and all the stuff regularly it's going to be um you know uh about two forty for the for the year. If you do it monthly, it's you know two thirty nine forty, or you can get two years for two fifty. So again, you could shoot me an email or send me yours, and I'll uh, send you the slides and and. Um, See if you can't. You can also uh, check out a free trial for seven days and see everything we do. <clears throat> any any general questions about the stock market? About the Fed, whether they will cut or won't they? I think they'll probably raise their quarter and say we're going to pause. That's my guess. All righty, guys. I'm going to sign off. Um, I'll send you the slides. Anyone else wants them, just hit me at jeff.hirsch at hirschorg.com. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for coming. And uh, everyone, make sure you take up uh, Jeff on his offer at the Stock Traders Almanac. And uh, Jeff, it's always great meeting up with you. And thanks for taking the time uh, to talk to everybody. And uh, like I said, it's always uh, always look forward to having you on, old friend. I appreciate it, Faust. It looks like a couple of questions just popped in. So um, what, are, what are your feelings about the volatility due to algo trading? I think the volatility is not due to algo trading. I think it's due to overvaluation and the tariff wars and the Fed. Mostly the Fed um, being a little bit wishy-washy, uh, saying we're going to keep cutting, and then, oh, wait, we're pretty close. So I think that's created some of the volatility. 
Do I ever use a stop on seasonals? Yes, uh, on the seasonal sectors. On the best and worst six months, as we get deeper into it, we'll uh, you know add a stop to it. Um, but right here, right now, with our um, you know Dow, S and P, Nasdaq, and Russell ETF positions, we're holding that without a stop, and I and I think it it's paid off right now uh, with the volatility. So again, thank you guys. I'll send you um, the slides. The guy sent me the email address, and once again, Fasto, appreciate it, buddy. Have a great, uh, great holidays, everybody, and uh, be safe and have fun. You too, you too, Jeff. Thanks a lot.